welcome back to Vigor. It is your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of the JSS. Well, I told y'all the next time I come on this map, keep in mind that I'm learning. Keep that in mind. And I'm still trying to figure out myself which weapons work the best with this map. I've tried to VSS on stream, got, you know, like, I think a kill or two with it. Try the H bar T, I got a kill. Try the AUR A1, I got two. And so I'm thinking, right? What What's next? What is the next weapon I can use and come out alive with it? Well, when all else hits the fan, I mean, what it really hasn't, because there's still more options to choose from, I decided to go with a shotgun. And I spawn up here. Notice how I say the words up here. Because this map, I think, I think, is nothing but a downward slope. I mean, the dam is on the right hand side of the map, you know, the east. But from there on down, pretty much, it is just a decreasing gradient. And I don't know how to feel about that. And honestly, I don't want to see somebody with an M82 on the dam killing somebody in the middle of the map. I want to see that happen. It don't even got to be a headshot. Just, just a straight up body shot with the M82 from that far away. It could happen. So we're here on Kirsten, and please let me know if I'm saying that right. And you know, we're at the tallest point in the map, besides the dam, and I'm like, you know, might as well just explore here. And then somebody uses the detector. Not really worried about it, but at the same time too, I mean, look what's around me. Like I said, slowly decreasing gradient. I can't be stealthy through here, like... My options for cover are very limited. Yes, there are rocks. But if you cover up your head in one position, you're exposing it to like three others. I don't like those odds. The best thing I can do right now is keep moving. And I say that as I go prone right here. And I think, let me go hit this comm station. You know, make it overweight. But then I hear a bugle and something else fire. There's something else that fired. It's probably dead. Probably so. And so I crawl up to this rock. Again, I know that, I mean, easily spotted, but then I see somebody. Drop to the ground real quick, because I have no cover. All I can really do is just hope they don't see me. And then I realize, you know, this map. Is full of sunlight. If you wear an odd color on this map, you're pretty much begging to be spotted. How do I feel about that? Wonderful. Because this guy's wearing red. Mission complete. That's what I'm talking about. Now, remember, there was a second person in that house. And actually, the detector is right next to the house. And he just ran into the house. So we know he's in there. And look, a bugle with, you know, some decent consumables in there as well. Now look, if I was a sweaty player and not a smart player, I would just blindly run in there with a grenade. But no, I know this guy has options. This guy indeed has options. And so, I'm trying to figure out what's my best approach. Well, I could circumnavigate the house and try to get an angle on the windows that are, you know, in the barred house. Then I think, if I stay undetected for long enough, he might get antsy and come out here to the detector and use it. If he's moving or not, I can hit him with a shotgun and he'll probably be dead. So that's my plan. 
But let us not forget, this map is an open ass decline. And so even though I feel safe in tunnel visioning in on this one dude, gotta keep in mind, number one, this is the barred house. Number two, this is the detector. And number three, look around you. See all those ridge lines? Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm wearing gray, white-ish, so I somewhat blend in with the rock. But this bugle and my bag are giving me away. So I got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. And so I make it to around this corner and I'm like, he's not taking any action until I hear that car. Putting two and two together, I realized that maybe he jumped out the house and looted that car to try to escape. But then I hear that to my right, and I'm like, ah, oh, this guy is going to leave. He's probably going to leave. It's cool. It's cool. Now, what's over here that's causing all this commotion? And so, I go over here, and I try to find out. But then I do find out when I realize that the container is over there. And so I try to be stealthy about it and go around back and again use the shadows to my advantage. Then they shut off one of the locks. Okay, bet. Now, that's good. This area is pretty small, kind of like a little corridor for Metal Gear Solid. But, I mean, there's like two open ass areas to the left and to the right. So, I'm going to use my surroundings to my advantage. I hop to the left, because if they go to the left, then I can easily spot them. But if I go to the right, then the container is over there. So, I don't expect when I see him running like this behind all these houses. And yes, I know I could shoot him right now, but he's awfully close to that fence. His cover's right beside him. I don't want to shoot somebody when the cover is right beside them because then that gives them a chance to retaliate. And I don't really like that. And yes, had a bugle, a bugle on me. Um, I didn't realize the power of the bugle until I streamed with it. And I didn't stream with it at the time of this playthrough. So missed opportunity? Maybe. Potential death averted? 100% yes. Now here's a tactic that I learned from playing other games. If you sit behind the bush, it's actually more effective than sitting in the bush. Yeah. So now, we last seen him heading behind these houses. Why am I going so far behind him? His last one position? Because sneaking up on somebody from the back in this game is the easiest way to kill somebody. Easiest way. I almost wish, almost wish there was a, or an animation to where you can silently kill somebody in this game. That could be just me. And my uh, put your cell playthrough energy coming through. But I almost wish that was the case. Because then that would give knives, you know, an actual purpose. So I'm waiting here. And I'm like, Sweat, maybe he would use the phone. But then I peep that somebody has the airdrop. And they waited for that for this precise moment. And you know, I, I don't blame them. I do not blame them at all. And here comes the real airdrop. And it's like I hear him faintly, but as I'm hearing him, each time he takes a step, I gotta think, where's my nearest piece of cover to where I can track him at? Now, I don't know if he can shoot through hay bales, but that was that's what I'm thinking right now. Take cover near those hay bales. But this metal works even better. Yes, I made a vicious circle, and there he is, but 
it's too far. Shotgun won't kill him at that range. He's farther than what the previous guy I killed is. And that was a stretch in and of itself. And yes, I have a bugle, but in that split second window, I couldn't go prone and then aim for his head and kill him in one shot. But then he pings me. So now I have to go up. I have to go up now, because I don't want to get caught out on the road. And plus, if I go into the housing area, then there are, there's too much cover for him. But there's also too much cover for me. At least here, I have that height advantage, you know what I'm saying? So I see him, like, running away, and he waddled away, waddle, waddle, into the forest. Well, the field. Vegetable field. I don't know what kind of field that is, to be honest with you. And I'm like, okay, um, why are you going that way? And yes, I skipped his friend's body because I got some good stuff on me. And if anything, I didn't see anything that I wanted in the lobby because I already bought like a really good shotgun. So it's cool. So I'm trying to be stealthy about it. Knowing damn well he might have another PSD in like 40% of the time they do. I'm just trying to be stealthy about it. Using the water to cover up my footsteps as well. So now I get the idea. What if he's in this house? If he's in this house, I can't hear him because of the water and the bees. But then, if you look on the ground, you'll see him going prone or somewhere because I remember this playthrough. He was he's in this field. And so I think if this yellow shed was two stories, I could go up it and shoot him in the head. And now I'm trying to think, what's the best way to go about this? I know he's in the field. I can go through here and not vault the fence. But turns out he was actually like relocating. He's behind me in the forest running away he has no more options now he pinged me one time and didn't see me but now he's gone he's heading straight for the exit he's heading straight for it now I know I said I don't like engaging people when they have a chance to retaliate but what if what if he takes a moment to stand still and they're crows, so that should get him to slow down a little bit. Hell, even I slow down, anticipating him to slow down. But he doesn't. He's in there, and he's counting down, and he's leaving. He's leaving. And I'm going to use a PSD to make sure. And there's nobody left in the encounter. As I've said before, I'm learning this map. I'm learning where not to go and learning where the hot spots are. Now, do you think do you think that this map is more or less dangerous than the batteries? Let me know. I say it's more dangerous. I say it's more dangerous because at least on battery, you have indoor cover at least but on this map you have no cover at all and plus it's a fully descending map at any point you can have the height advantage on somebody but on battery it's relatively flat but let me know what you think in the comment section down below again which map is more dangerous this map or battery i'll catch you in the next episode until next time Peace.